In the last couple of videos, I've mentioned the technique called stitching, and many of you have reached out to me and wanted a little more information about it. Whenever that bite is tough and those bass are really finicky, this is something I add to my presentation because it makes any bottom bouncing bait look ultra realistic. And as we talked about in the last video, when those bass get within inches of the lure, that is a critical moment in our presentation when those lures have to look so real. They need to look like something rummaging around down there on the lake or riverbed. If it doesn't, odds are those bass are going to turn away. We may not even know that they were down there. And of course, this technique works great with both spinning gear and bait cast gear. Okay, when you're using a bait caster, there's a couple different ways that you can go ahead and stitch that lure. The first is to go ahead and take a hand and literally put it on the line once you have some taut line and pull it and stitch it just a little bit. And then you can kick that reel, pull up the slack, and then go ahead and stitch it just like this. My favorite way though is to keep one hand on the handle and then put the other hand in front of the reel like this and then when you gather some gather up that slack and get some tight line is literally twitch it this way. And when I'm using bait cast equipment I just feel I have better control. I feel that my hands are always in position to go ahead and get a hook set if needed. So that's how I do it on casting gear. And with spinning equipment, really what it comes down to is two ways. One of them is similar. Once you have some tight line or you got that slack out of the line, you can go ahead and pull it just like this and stitch it. Or if you're using a rod like this one here is a medium light power rating and then you have a fast or a moderately fast action, you can go ahead and put a little bow or slack in the line and then bounce the rod like this just the slightest bit and by having that slack in the line it removes a lot of that extra motion so with spinning gear these are the two different ways that I do it. And remember the end goal is you're trying to mimic something rooting around on the bottom. I always envision a crawfish just kind of crawling around down there and minding its own business. And the stitching technique will also take some debris that's down there on the bottom and create little puff clouds as well, which looks very real. And this is not something that I do all the time. It's not a technique for covering water because it is slow. It's something that I do, like I said, when the bite is tough and after that initial drop, those first few feet after, after that lure hits the bottom, when the bass are most likely to have noticed that lure as it was falling through the water column. I much prefer to do this particular technique over something like dead sticking because it still keeps the angler active. And when you're just stitching away on that line and you feel that thump right there, it's really, it's pretty awesome. Most often it's something that I do for five to 10 seconds after the initial drop, then I will go ahead and drag the bait forward and maybe stitch it again for a little bit, then finish off the presentation. It's a really great trick to have in your toolbox on those super tough days. And hey, if you wanna watch a video that explains and literally will show you how bass like to position on boat ramps, go ahead and check this one out right here and make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For The Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.